We're talking cozy settings coming up right after this. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to The Garden Home, a show about design and blurring the lines between inside and out. Now, I've got a great show in store for you today. It's all about cozy places, places that make us feel warm and invited. You know, that's what's so important about this town. It's Natchez, Mississippi. It's charming, and the people here are so hospitable. In fact, we're gonna spend some time here at Twin Oaks, a wonderful bed and breakfast that's owned by a dear friend of mine, Regina Charbonneau. Also in today's show, we'll tour one of the most stylish and comfortable historic homes in Natchez that's recently been restored with its original architectural detail. Then I wanna show you a great way to cozy up to a fireplace for cold nights. Well, as you can see, we've got a lot of great stuff to cover in today's show. So why don't we get started and go find Regina. You know, Regina, it's amazing to me to be able to come to Natchez in the middle of winter and see all these things blooming. What's wonderful about Christmas in Natchez is that I have narcissus <laughs> right out of my garden to decorate for Christmas. And I love Twin Oaks. It's such a handsome Greek Revival house. Oh, thank you. Was it built in the 1830s? 1832, originally by Pierce and Cornelia Connolly. And then it had several owners, but typically an owner stays here 60 years. I hope we'll be as lucky. Now, how long have you been operating a bed and breakfast out of Twin Oaks? Almost 10 years now. Really? Yes. Has it been that long? It has. It's hard to believe. Do you remember you walked around the grounds <laughs> with me before I bought it? I because know. I was overwhelmed whether I should take this on. Well, I mean, you've just done a beautiful job. It's oh, maturing beautifully. Yeah. So, well, you've had a nice hand in that. You know, I love what you've done both outside and inside, and particularly with what you've done with the kitchen. Well, since it's starting to drizzle, which comes in December as well, <laughs> let's go have a cup of tea in oh, the kitchen. Oh, great, yeah. Now, this kitchen is certainly a working kitchen and, and it's absolutely charming. Well, you know, it's funny because although we're a bed and breakfast, I don't do breakfast. I tease that we're a bed and whatever, but I do cooking class weekends, which I really enjoy. But I'm much more of a dinner cook than a breakfast cook. Now, how many rooms do you have? I know the original cottage is here, but I don't, I don't recall the Six number of rooms. Six guest rooms. Yeah. And they're all decorated individually with uh, antique beds, but queen beds. I certainly beds. have my favorite. Oh, you do? <laughs> Number six. Number six, the <laughs> camellia room. That bed is so pretty in there. It is it's indeed. It's a cozy and room. comfortable. Well, I love what you've done in the rooms, and I know that decorating here and restoration here is kind of an ongoing process, but the front two parlors are coming together beautifully. Oh, thank you. Well, I've chosen to use color. It's what I like. Again, I think it's just a mixture of some antiques and also some practical comfortable pieces of furniture. I never feel I have enough seating. It's something I'm constantly working on because I love to be able to sit in a room with 12 or 15 people and everybody can be together in conversation. What you've done here at, at Twin Oaks, it does feel like a family home. Uh, people have to respond to that and they must enjoy it. Well, you know, one of the things that is interesting that I think people are always drawn to is my personal history. There are photographs of my family members and my boys, but also the history of my restaurants in San Francisco and in the gallery where I have all of the actors' sketches from opening night parties. Right. And I find that people always gravitate towards that. You know, Regina, I just love the way the natural light floods into this room. I guess this is the largest room in the house. 
It is. Well, it's so beautiful. The table is the right proportion, and this punka, I mean, what a coup to have such a late 18th century It punka. is, 1790s from a beautiful home called Propinquity. It was in that home from the 1790s until they gave it to me, so it's very special. You are a lucky girl. I yeah. am. I am. Well, they're so unique, and you know, the function of them in these houses, they, I mean, they were really used. The whole idea was that you pulled this rope and it caused the punka to swing back and forth, stirring the breeze and kept mosquitoes or insects off the food. And, and the there's guests. several in homes in Natchez. It's a great pleasure to be back at Twin Oaks. Well, I love the hospitality and your cooking. Oh, well, I, you're one of my favorite people to cook for. <laughs> I think you know that. Thanks for having me. Sure. Now that we've indulged in Regina's warm southern hospitality, let me show you something you can do with friends and family in front of a fireplace on those chilly evenings. Do you have rooms in your house that you really feel like are like the coziest room in the whole place? You know, this room for me is one of the most comfortable rooms I have. And even though I love it in all seasons, I have to say during the cold months, it's particularly cozy, especially if I can have a fire in the fireplace. It just radiates so much warmth. And with this being a Rumford fireplace, it's one of the most efficient wood burning fireplaces you can have. You see, the design really hasn't changed for almost 200 years. Now let's dispense with the history lesson for just a moment and sort of talk about what brings this room together from a color standpoint. You see I have a braided rug on the floor that has gold and brown and blue in it. That's the fabric, if you will, or the colorways that I chose to springboard from for all the accessories and furnishings in the room. There are two large sofas framing the room, and you see they almost create an enclosure or an envelope here that make this space even more cozy. In the center, I have a stool that can serve both as a coffee table or as a place for people to sit or play games. Now, if we go back to color and take a little closer look at it, you can see that the majority of this room is made up of neutrals, cream, brown, and gray. And to pick up the red color of the brick, I've used some throw pillows that have some terracottas, reds, and burnt oranges in them. The mantle here is really very simple. It's just a large beam that we put up here uh, to serve as a shelf. And above it, I have a John Audubon print, very large, sort of overscaled for the space, which I think is really good. And then I don't have a symmetrical arrangement on this mantle. What I have is an arrangement that's balanced. Here I have two twig trees, but then over here I have three lighted candles. The composition is balanced. You see, it doesn't necessarily need to be symmetrical to be balanced. All right, now let's talk about some of the refreshments I have here. And I wish you could smell the aroma of this hot chocolate wafting up. It's really incredible. And here, this is really a fun setup. This is all about making s'mores. Now, who doesn't love s'mores? What I've done here is I've taken a piece of butcher block as the base to sit on this coffee table. On this butcher block, I have the plates with all of the requisite ingredients for delicious s'mores in the way of graham crackers, chocolate, and of course, large marshmallows. There's some napkins there, as well as some bamboo skewers and the source of heat. I have this basket with some cooking fuel in the center, all stabilized by these beautiful rocks. This is a great idea if you're having friends over for a party, or if you have children that you don't want to get near the fire, or maybe it's too wet or cold outside and you can't do s'mores there. You can set up this, and it's a safe way to have a delicious treat. All you do to make s'mores is you just want to toast your marshmallow like this. Some people love them charred black, but not me. I like a golden brown marshmallow. And I just rotate it the same distance over the fire like this. The key to a great s'more, as far as I'm concerned, is you want to get that marshmallow as gooey as possible and as hot as possible without burning it. It's the heat of the marshmallow that will actually melt the chocolate. And when the chocolate melts with the gooey marshmallow, with the graham cracker, and then you take the other graham cracker and you make a little sandwich with just a little bit of gentle pressure. That is a thing of beauty. 
Hey, if you want to step back into your childhood and have a little fun, set up a s'more station the next time you have a party. Mmm. <laughs> Messy, but really good. Mmm. You know, I just love garden design, and I love it when you send me pictures of your home where you're looking for ideas, just some creative inspiration. And today we've got a wonderful house in Louisiana from Lisa. Now, Lisa has some issues to deal with. She's got a couple of, well, what I call retina irritants here and here, these electrical necessities, they're eyesores in other words. So we need to come up with a way to hide those. She loves old fashioned plants. She gave me a whole list, things like crepe myrtles. She loves hydrangeas, she loves azaleas, all those southern things that work so well in a house in Louisiana. Now this is a problem and what I'm gonna suggest here is a pretty radical idea. You know, Lisa, one thing that you could do is create a bed that basically comes around like this and this whole area becomes a garden. I know that's a lot of landscape, but you could bring the flower bed around here and then across the front and out and down like this, all right? And in here, we could then plant a tree, a flowering tree. What if we came in here with a crepe myrtle here, and we came back here and did another crepe myrtle here, and another crepe myrtle here. So we did a grove of them almost. Maybe even another one over there. So you've got this grove of crepe myrtles that are gonna have a pale pink bloom on it all across the front. Or you'd be able to look in between these. They'd have the trunks that would come up. And then you would come in with another layer of shrubs in here. It may be too hot for azaleas. I don't think so. If you started with some large crepe myrtles, then if you came in here with azaleas, it would begin to screen this and a big mound of those all up under the crepe myrtle. So you create the spine of azalea bloom in here like this, all right? And we would want to repeat that over here if we could um, in the way of maybe some more azaleas here on this side. Um, and what I would suggest is a Camellia sasanqua here at the back. Those are such good value. It's a fall blooming Camellia. And I would use one on the end here, they're evergreen. I would use one here, one here, one here on either side. So you see how this is sort of coming together. Now you said you like evergreen plants that bloom pink. What I would consider here would be Raphaelepsis or Indian hawthorn all along here and under the windows. And there's a dwarf Indian hawthorn that I think you could plant along this edge. It's hard for me to tell what you have along the sidewalk. It looks very narrow. If Indian hawthorn doesn't work, what you may have to do is just do a ground cover in here in the way of monkey grass or liriope, and you could grow on these walls, these panels of the wall, new dawn roses here, new dawn roses here, and create a trellis that would hide this box here and do a new dawn rose there. And you could even carry that trellis over here and one over here on this side if you wanted to. Gives you a basic framework. I would want to balance the crepe myrtles by pulling maybe one big crepe myrtle over here in the lawn, like this, to sort of balance the house. I think the only thing we have to fill in across the front would be uh, annual color here, or if you wanted to go with a ground cover like Asian jasmine, this could all be ground cover to keep it really simple, or you could add color here. This is a wonderful area here for you to drop in color, but what I would do is have maybe some boxwood just at, right at the edge of the walkway that gives you kind of a backdrop like this, and then have your annual color right here in the front. Yep. So that gives you some of the plants that you were looking for. Hope these ideas stimulate some creativity for you, and good luck with your project. Now let's visit one more beautiful place in Natchez, Mississippi. 
Ravenna is a historic Greek revival house that's recently been restored with its original architectural detail intact. Let's meet up with my friend and owner, Diana Hike, for a tour. Diana, the place just looks so beautiful. Oh, thank you. The porch is such an important part of, well, this part of the world. Of course, when Ravenna was built in the early 19th century, uh, these porches were, were very functional, weren't they? We feel like we use the porch today as people might have many years ago. Well, I love the way this room is furnished. Oh, thank you. Yeah, with the wicker and all the beautiful plants. What's so marvelous about this space, the porches here at Ravenna, is that they're so generous and broad. Your idea of expanding the garden by opening up this space here to give us a vista complements the porch because you do feel you have one entire living area, garden and porch. You know, this entryway is so beautiful. It's virtually untouched. Untouched. This is all original to the house. But we did make changes that you can't see. And those would be things like pipes that are within these columns. So within these fluted Greek Doric columns are the pipes, yes. the workings of the house. The workings of the house. That is very clever, I didn't know that. When we renovated, we wanted to take all of the exterior pipes on the home and the wires off so that we still retained the beauty and simplicity of our home. But we needed modern conveniences. Modern plumbing. Yeah, modern absolutely. Wiring. All those creature comforts that Central we all love. Central air and heat. <laughs> Diana, I just love the scale of this this hallway. Oh, thank you. Now, when you restored this house, mm -hmm. um, as I recall, there was you did a lot of work on the staircase, didn't you? We did. We opened the staircase to its original form. It goes all three floors mm -hmm. of the house. Mm -hmm. The woodwork in our home, I think, is very special to me. This arch is so lovely. Who would ever want to mess with that or tamper with it? Now, Diana, the door surrounds and the arch and the uh, window surrounds, they, they're all wood and not plaster, right? That's true. All of them are wood. Beautiful car, beautiful car. Yeah. This door. Oh, well, wow. you know, we're talking about things that we wouldn't touch, but there are also times in a house there are things that you would do. And one of the things we did was to put uh, the faux finish back on some of these beautiful doors. And an art, local artisan here in Natchez did this with a feather <laughs> and a comb and I think it's exquisite. It's one of the best examples of graining I've seen. Thank you. Well, this is the room we live in, our study. And it's a combination, I think, Alan, of modern day and antiquity. Well, I think so often people feel like it's an old house, that's not gonna be very comfortable, but heavens, you've made this one extremely comfortable. Well, thank you. We like to think of it as a home. Tell me about the little closet over here. Well, this is an original feature to the house, but it wasn't very functional. But <laughs> and you've made it into a bar. We've made it into a bar, <laughs> I love but it. it also stores some pipes in the back of it for our upstairs bathroom. And we like a mix of things. I have a very modern painting here by a wonderful artist in New Orleans, and these are some English prints I found in Maine this summer. Did you move walls and, and like change where doors are? Did you have to do much of that in the restoration of Ravenna? We were very particular about doing that. There was a room, uh, our bedroom, that I'd like to show you, that we uh, did move a doorway so that we could have a view and to make the room more easily furnished and more comfortable. Let's take a look at sure. it. Well, we had a bit of a challenge here, and I guess it all starts with the beautiful views we have oh, out of the windows. Beautiful room. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's an example of how I think we made it a little bit more comfortable because there was a doorway behind the bed, and we really couldn't figure out how to place the bed right. and enjoy the view out of the windows yeah. when we woke up. And there was no wall that you could put the bed on, none, really. Yeah. None whatsoever. So we shifted the doorway over here, at the same time removed an interior bath that didn't have a window. So we created a bathroom dressing area for us out of the fourth bedroom. I love how straightforward it is and how, how simple and clean-lined it is. Thank you so much for having me back to Ravenna. It's been a real pleasure. Well, I love it when you come. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's have a cup of tea. Let's do.
I'm Alan Smith. You know, when I'm not taping my three different television shows, writing books, doing a radio show, traveling around the country doing lectures, and also bringing my crew along to do some taping, I'm working on this 650-acre farm. N not alone, I have plenty of help from my brother and sister-in-law. But when I'm not doing all those things, I like to kick back and have a cup of coffee and read. But, you know, there's still time to do some other things, believe it or not. Well, you know, the farm is a really big place, and if it wasn't for my brother and my sister-in-law, I really couldn't have this place. They really do run it. I always wanted to build them a house, because they do so much. And so I just feel really excited and fortunate to be able to build this, this house and, and, and for it to be for, for them. Cody is a big dog, and he runs up to that fence and he touches it with his nose, and he goes, oh, 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 and he takes off running. Are we twittering this? I'm a twitter. I'm a tweeter. We had to scoop all this out. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a new house for my brother Chris and his wife Joy. Okay, but here's the kicker. I have to build this thing with a budget of $150,000. And since I'm a conservationist, I've got to build it as green as I possibly can within that budget. But we also have to build it within 150 days. You know, there's a lot of talk about carbon footprints these days. So we're working really hard to source the materials as close to this project as we possibly can using local craftsmen. That's all helping keep the price down and for us to stay on the green target. I've built houses before. In fact, my house downtown actually moved 18 blocks onto a lot. And man, what a nightmare. You know, it turned out to be a really great house. It's very traditional in style, modeled after a late 19th century colonial revival home. When I built this farmhouse out here on the hill, I decided that I wanted to make it more in the Greek revival style around 1840 and make it look as old as possible, but with all the new amenities and make it as green as I possibly could. And let me tell you, I learned a lot building this house. I want to take all of that information, put it together, and create this small farm cottage. And I want to do it for less than the average cost of a home in America today, which is $200,000. The interior, we're going to be doing some fun things in there uh, that are, aren't going to cost a lot of money because we've got a budget. And, uh, but they're gonna be really clever, I think. And I, they're ideas that have been rolling around for a long time that I've wanted an opportunity to apply and really haven't had a place to do it. So this little cottage is the perfect place. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I tell you, when you get a chance and you can get out and travel, travel and find places that make you feel warm and invited, like this place. Until next time from the Garden Home, I'm Alan Smith. More information about today's topic and other topics covered in this series can be found at plnsmith.com.